partial fractions, type 1 of 3 that this video series will be covering. There's partial fractions. A single fraction with two denominators becomes two fractions, each with one denominator. In grade 10, we worked our way up to be able to very proudly take two fractions combined with a common denom denominator to get to one. And now, in tertiary education, after school, you're going to be expected to go the other way. But then I guess if you cannot do that, you will not be able to do this. And there is your partial fractions. Referred to as decomposition into partial fractions, hopefully it won't smell. Make sure that the numerator is of a lower degree than the denominator. Use long division if you have to. So if we have a look here, degree is 1 because it's x to the 1. Degree is 1 because it's x to the 1. No, 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 no. Long division. So therefore we say x plus 1 into 6x. X. x into 6 gives you 6. Multiply. 6x plus 6. Change the sign on the bottom line and add. So we will end up with minus 6. And in fact... We can't divide there, so therefore that is our remainder. And we say x, 6x over x plus 1 is 6 minus, and that's not part of our partial fractions really, the remainder of x plus 1. We'll leave it for somebody else to do. There's another one. Third degree, second degree, must divide. a squared into a cubed gives you a. Multiply, there we are, subtract, change the sign on the bottom line and add, so we get 5a squared plus 2a, bring down a squared into 5a squared gives you 5, multiply, there we are, change the sign on the bottom line and add, so that becomes 2a plus 10a, 12a, 10 plus 15, 25. There is our remainder. A plus 5 plus, leave that for somebody else to do. Some practice. I'll only give you the answers once you've clicked. But of course, pause after every answer and try them yourselves. Let's now look at type 1, linear factors. Linear factors means producing straight line graphs. So if we had y equals x minus 2, that would be a straight line. y equals x plus 1, straight line. Linear factors have degree 1 and not above. There's the partial fractions. We go to there, now we're going to go the other way. Any expression in that form, ax plus b over that, notice that's first degree, second degree, will become Number over x minus 1 plus number over x minus n. We use capital letters usually, just so we don't confuse them with the smaller letters, because sometimes you'll end up with a big A and a small A in the same working. So just be careful with that. There can be a negative here, but don't put a negative, because it's better if you just put plus B, and if it's supposed to be negative, B will turn out as negative. Let's do an example. Linear factors, x minus 2, x plus 1. So we're going to take it and divide it into two fractions. Capital A, capital B, representing numbers. First thing we'll do is we'll find a common denominator. There we are. Now, because that over that equals that over that, and this is the same, we can equate just the numerators, and that's useful. We leave out all the extra bit there. Now, this has got A and B. I need to find A and B. So what I do is I've also got X, but I can substitute any value of X I like. So I say, well, to get rid of B, what do I need to do? Oh, if I make B 2, B goes. B equals 2. There we are. X equals 2. There we are. Substitute 2 for X. 2 for X. 2 for X. Cheers, B. This is 0 times B. And we can end up with finding A. Now I look and say, well, if I want A to go, then I must substitute X equals minus 1. So let's do that. Minus 1. There we are. Cheers A. And we get the B value. So now we know 
A, and we know B, so therefore this can come down, and we get our final answer there. Another one. Now you might look at this and say, well, this is not linear factors, but in fact that is a quadratic which can be factorized to difference of squares. So we must do that first. There we are. Now we can do our a over x minus 3, b over x plus 3. Common denominator. Equate numerators. Note, because I'm going to use substitution, I'm not going to multiply this out yet, because this is very useful now. To get rid of b, 3, and we get b, a equal to 11 over 6. Oh, lousy fractions, never mind. Going back here, if I want to get a... I put 3 in for, so if I want to get B, I put a negative 3 for A, there we are, and the A will go, and I can end up with B equal to 13 over 6, now I know A and B, so therefore, there we are, but this is very mathematically messy, so I'm going to write that with a 6 below, multiplying that bottom line, and that 6 below, multiplying that bottom line. Looks far neater like that. Notice that it's still 11 over 6, still 13 over 6. Let's look at another example. Aha! This now has 1, 2, 3 factors. What I do is x squared minus 4 becomes x minus 2x plus 2. So I now have an A, B, C, all capitals. Common denominator. Drop the denominator. Now, if I'm going to find a, that's x minus x, x minus 2x plus 2, if I sub 1, these two go. So let's do that. There we are. And I end up with a equaling 1. Now, if I were to find b, this is x minus 1x plus 2, all I do is substitute plus 2 to get rid of those with minus 2s. There we are. So x equals plus 2. And we end up with 0, 0. And that gives us b equaling 2, minus 2. Now, I want to get c. So I'll say, well, x minus 2, x minus 1, x minus 2. I'm going to substitute negative 2. Because that will get rid of a and b. And therefore, c is 1. Great. There's my partial fractions. Note degree there, hey? Think about that. X squared, X squared, second degree, second degree. Remember at the beginning. Aha!